Hello again, all you magnificent people, and welcome back to another episode of Anecologist Plays, where we are back in Grounded, learning more about life in the undergrowth by playing this amazing game. Now, we are going to do a bit of a boss battle today, and I am both looking forward to it and not looking forward to it at all. Now, in order to do this, we are going to be making the Orchid Mantis Kebabs, and you can see we have a whole bunch of brood mother chunks, and that is because, yes, I have gone off screen. I have gone and killed the broodmother a few more times. She has now been killed 15 times, as you can see there. And yeah, we are going to go and kill the Orchid Mantis today. So we're just going to wait for these Orchid Mantis kebabs to be done. And then we are heading off. In the meantime, we are going to be upgrading our lovely salt morning star so that it is now at least level seven there we go so it's now level seven we now need mighty jewels which we don't have the recipe for yet we are going to have to go and find a way to get that as well Alrighty then now before we head over there it is something i'm also going to make and that is the spicy staff now it is not going to be useful against the Orchid Mantis, but it is going to be a fun thing to use overall. Let's have a look here. All right, so let's see if I point. Oh, nice. Okay, I can fire little fireballs there. If I charge it, what happens? Oh, big boom. Right. Now oh, we've got to go test this. Now there is a bombardier beetle around here. He is neither resistant nor weak to spicy. Okay, that does all right damage. Of course, this is still a level one. Look, Mr. Bombardier, you can throw things at me. I can throw things at you. And there's nothing you can say about that. Let's cook Fricky over here. Ah, oh, Fricky doesn't want to be cooked. Fricky's still alive. Fricky's invincible. I'm, I'm just messing around with this stuff, but anyway, there we go. One thing dead. This is very interesting. Let's see. Can I damage the larva underground? Look, is this this? No, oh, this is a pet. That's why Fricky is invincible. Okay, so no damage done to anything underground. It was worth testing, you know. And now I believe we are ready to head off to the Orchid Mantis. Now, if we can beat this Orchid Mantis up in the shrub at the top there, that will be a wonderful uh, birthday present for me here, since today is my birthday as I'm recording this, not as it is coming out. Uh, by the time this video comes out, it has actually been my birthday for a little bit. And just a reminder that until the end of January, there will only be one video per week as I am still away in the field and will not have the time beforehand to actually make two videos for every week. But when February rolls around, I will of course be back in action and hope to bring you guys two videos per week again on the Tuesday and the Friday. Right, now we are just going to run past everybody here and hope they leave us alone. So we are heading up to that point there. All right, now we have our respawn point. Let's just quickly set that. And let's have a look at what we have. Of course, we have our roly-poly leg plates and breastplate. I'm going to put the brood mother helmet on here, the master of the mother demon, to give the poison coating to our weapons, whatever we use. We have got our crow crossbow over here, which has got 80 salt arrows uh, ready to use because as far as i recall the mantis is weak to salt so we've got our crow crossbow with salt arrows we've got our salt morning star at level seven as well we've got a whole bunch of orchid mantis kebab so i can fight it quite a lot of times we have our thor's pendant equipped which does amazing things we also have our black ox burgers, which we are going to consume one of them now, which will give us damage resistance as well as more health. And then we have 17 beefy smoothies of the, the beefy liquid rage smoothies to be exact, which will also hopefully 
help us survive this encounter. Oh, this is a gorgeous battle arena, I must say. Beautiful flowers. Now, this appears to be a dicotyledonous plant, so that's a plant with two parts to the seed. But it has got six petals, which is characteristic of a monocotyledonous plant. Now, I've been unable to figure out what this plant actually is. But in any case, we are going to be fighting the orchid mantis in here. So let's just equip our salt arrows. Make sure we've got everything ready. I think so. And then, let's fight. Now the mantis should come from up there. The orchid mantis is actually able to change color, believe it or not. To be either pink or brown. And before we fight it, let's have a quick look at it. Now it's called the orchid mantis because it mimics an orchid. And notice these flattened parts along the legs here. That is so that when it sits on the in the plant, it actually looks like a flower's petals rather than just legs that you see. So this is a way of breaking up the outline. And you'll find that in quite a variety of insects, things like leaf insects, for example, also do this extremely well. Now the scientific name of this orchid mantis would be Hymenopus coronatus. Coronatus referring to crowned, and I suspect it's because the eyes do kind of, it looks like it's got wearing a crown, even though it is just the eyes. They have amazing eyesight, of course, with compound eyes like those. They should also have little or silly, little sing, simple eyes on the top here, which we don't see in the specimen. Uh, just a little something that they should technically have. Small wings, indicating this is still a juvenile, this is not an adult. So adults would actually have big wings covering their body, uh, especially females, which I suspect this is. Females are much larger than the males, and of course they are ambush predators, using their very good camouflage to actually catch unsuspecting prey or ambush unsuspecting prey, grabbing them with these spiked forelimbs, so there is very little, if any, escape after they have grabbed you. Oh, beautiful, beautiful creature. Also, like the Black Widow we talked about previously, potential sexual cannibals, as the females may eat the male after mating. Not guaranteed, though, but it is known that they will sometimes eat the male. And that is so that she can get enough nourishment to actually f uh, feed the eggs that are developing inside her, to give a better chance at those eggs actually developing successfully and then enough nutrients in them to hatch successfully. So it is a way of increasing the likelihood of a successful reproduction attempt. But without any further ado, let us face off against the assassin. Now the, the trick here is of course perfect block as it always is. Oh, uh, that was the screech. Okay, good to know. I just realized that I have got some wrong statuses on here. I don't need natural explorer. But I'm going to put on parry master over here. And also just going to quickly peep the orchid mantis. <laughs> Oh, that is a devastating attack there. Okay, good to know. I, obviously, I'm running out of stamina as I stun her. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do now? Okay, leap to that side. Are we going to jump to me? Yes, jump at me. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that posture, right? Four legs uh, raised up, abdomen curled around the or against the body. What mantises very often do is they do this threat display, where if they feel intimidated, usually if they actually have their wings, they would have their wings popped up like that, the abdomen lowered, but the wings raised up. That is a threat display. It is meant to make it look bigger than it actually is and intimidating against predators and i'm not gonna lie if i were the size of pete that would be extremely extremely 
terrifying and intimidating, even more so than it already is. I must say, this mantis is just brilliantly, brilliantly done in looks and in behavior. But there is one thing, one thing that bothers me. This mantis does not occur in the USA, not in our realm of reality. It does occur in Asia. It is an Asiatic species. It doesn't occur in the United States. However, they are kept as pets. And one could argue that this is possibly an escaped pet, which is unfortunately a real thing that happens. It's, uh, pets do escape. I can't find any records of this mantis in the wild in the USA. Uh, so probably not that common, but it is possible that they could fly off and escape. <clears throat> of course, one could have found their way into this pot over here. And with that, let's get a nice little hit. It was worth it. That was an amazing look at the little mantis over there. Oh, I love how this thing is done. Oh, that is a very nice devastating attack. Now, an interesting thing with this mantis is that it is, in this case, also found in a plant with flowers. And these mantids do show a behavior where they prefer actually being in plants that have got flowers in them. So they would actually go into a plant, and if there are no flowers there, they would keep on walking on the plant until they find a piece of the plant that has got the flowers present, and then they will sit there. Oh, and there she goes. Well now, that was an interesting 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 fight but managed to do it yay oh this is a beautiful creature oh my soul what a well done boss fight and as with the brood mother nice music also of course playing in the background but as i was saying they can change the color go from brown to pink depending on the background that they are on if they are sitting on a branch they would be browner in color Whereas if they are sitting close to the flowers, they would possibly be pinker in color. Now, there is the theory that they actually attract their victims to them. As they are sitting on the flower, it seems that they are attracting more pollinators than the flowers themselves are. And that's because they seem to absorb, some of them at least, the young ones in particular, seem to absorb more UV light. Whereas a lot of flowers may actually glow under UV light, they kind of look like marks on the flowers. And they, a lot of flowers, like these ones over here probably, that darker center is a way for pollinators to know where the nectar is. They are called nectar guides. Usually spots and stuff like that along the petals will indicate to the pollinators where the pollen is located. And if you have a mantis, not as big as the one that we just killed, but if you've got a mantis sitting over there and it doesn't glow under UV light, a bee or so flying past and seeing ultraviolet light will look at this dark blotch and go, oh, there must be nectar there. And they actually then get eaten, ambushed and eaten by the mantis. Now, I am going to do this a second time because I do want to make the armor set and the weapon. So I'm going to do this again, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Now, I have officially defeated the Orchid Mantis three times now. The second time, I did try something else. I actually tried fighting with the crossbow rather than the salt mace, and that actually went surprisingly well, especially now that one can block with the bows or the ranged weapons, that actually really went well. Uh, the second time, I only used two of my smoothies, as far as I recall. Uh, the third time, however, <laughs> when I went back to Malay, I used six of my smoothies, which unfortunately, you know, I don't have enough to tackle it a fourth time. But we have managed to kill her repeatedly. And now let's see if we can make my <laughs> all-time favorite weapon and armor set. Okay, so we can make the Scythe of Blossoms, which I am very, very excited about, but we unfortunately cannot make two of the three armor pieces that I wanted to make. The first one, the Assassin's Mask, we need Pond Moss, and unfortunately I need to go and kill more Black Widows before I can get that, because we need 
the Widow Dagger. And I only have one Super Spider Venom. We need four. So I need to go and kill a few more Black Widows before we can make that. And before we can therefore harvest the Pond Moss. So I need to go and do that at some point. For the chest piece, we only need pupa leather. That's easy enough to get. We can, however, make the Assassin's Greaves so long. So let us do that at least. And well, those Greaves do look very, very nice. So I am going to get to work on the rest of the ensemble over there. And hopefully we'll be able to make it next time. However, with us having killed the Mantis, we now have the Apex Predator mutation over here which gives you some kind of benefit based on if you use the weapons that you make from the bosses. So that will be the Broodmother Club, the Club of the Mother Demon, and it will be the Scythe of Blossoms as well. And so, let's make the Scythe of Blossoms. We have everything we need. And this weapon, oh my goodness. This swings extremely rapidly. It counts as a dagger. So if you have the, which I don't have yet, if you have the mutation, the assassin mu mutation, you actually do bleed damage with this as well. But apart from the fact that we've got a long reach and can easily kill aphids, you also can use it to chop down grasses. And look at that, two swings. And choppy choppy chop. And I am definitely going to be using this thing more. But that is it for today, everybody. Thank you once again for tuning into the little adventure over here. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new about the Orchid Mantis. Really an awesome foe to face and an amazing creature in real life as well. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like below and comment any questions you may have about anything you may have seen in the video. And until next time then, stay safe. I will see you all soon.